Hello everybody, it is Robbie from Southern California and it's already September 1st. So I'm gonna go through and do a garden tour like I do every couple weeks to see if there's been any changes and you know there hasn't been yet. Our weather's still holding stable. I'm not really putting in a winter garden yet. But let's start in the front yard like I usually do. I hope everybody's having a great day. Everything is still doing good. Some of the squash is starting to die down a little bit because it's thrown so many. I can't even tell you how many pounds of squash I have gotten off of those. These were hybrids, obviously, and they throw odd looking squash. Let's look around at this one. Look at this. They're round. Isn't that funny? So I've got to get those off. I'm, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with them, but I have been using the zucchini. I need to get some more zucchini bread done. I love making pancakes out of the zucchini, but there's so many things you do with it. I made even ground meat yesterday for tacos and half of it, more than half was uh, shredded zucchini in it. You couldn't tell. Look at here. What I'm starting here is on this tub, on this stump, I could have put a chair here, but right now the stump is here, so I'm gonna use that. And this is an old tub that is starting to really go. But I went ahead and threw in some zucchini. These are hybrids, but the ones in the cup that are coming up, this one hasn't quite started yet. These are pure zucchini seeds. So I should get zucchini off of that. And I'll tell you, the hybrids always grow better because they were born and raised here. Okay, so let's walk through. I've still got the green sorrow down there and I've got mint all over here, zucchini growing, some dinosaur kale that really needs some cleaning. Here's the tomato plant. Oh gosh, so many tomatoes. I cannot believe it. So many. There was even cucumbers in there. More zucchini in here, I believe. I haven't even picked that many. For, oh yeah, there's, oh yeah, they're back there. See, there's zucchini back here and back there. I don't do a harvest because, well, I don't harvest. I harvest as we need it. I don't need to pick a whole bunch and have it sitting. So when I need it, there's another zucchini. When I need it, I will come out here and get it. And there's celery growing. Oh, I see another tomato plant up here. Well, I knew that, but I didn't know it was so full of tomatoes. Midnight snack in a pot. Also born and raised here. So I'm not sure if it'll be pure, but everything is doing really good. And let's step out of here and go around. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do for winter yet. I think I'm gonna put in some more baby dinosaur kale. I've got a whole bunch growing on my deck garden. So I'm thinking of moving them. This is all orange mint. This is growing straight in wood chips. Remember, there's no soil here at all. This is blacktop, this is a parking lot. It's growing beautiful in the wood chips. Yes, the tool is holding up beautiful. Put in back in March and April, you, you wouldn't even believe that. It looks like it's brand new. It's, it's done its job and I love it. All the garlic chives and walking onions growing in there and sorrels in there and there's even mint and here's a little cutting from a dinosaur kale. Something's been eating it, probably the birds. It, it's just done great. The rabbits come up to it, they look at it and they leave. Let's see on the other side here, my chair. I love those chairs. I've got to get a couple more chairs going really quick. The chairs have been the greatest thing. I've got too many plants in here, really, but here is a garlic chive. It's starting to flower. This is all lettuce, and we've been picking it and using it. Onion chives and garlic chives and just walking onions, and this we've been using every day. This is beautiful green Swiss chard. This is not the red. I just love that. It, it's been amazing. And this is stevia. Look how beautiful the stevia is doing in there. So I am so happy with the chair. And if you've got dogs, you can grow a garden with dogs because the dogs aren't going to jump into your chair unless you've got a different type of dog that likes chairs. Um, here again, the squash, I composted in place there. So this one is starting to take off and we'll see. Yes, it is growing more fruit. So the larger compost in place bucket that was put there worked better than the smaller one because when I put the smaller one there, it stopped. It didn't stop because of the small one. I tried to see if it would take off again and it just wasn't enough. It's such a big squash. It pulled everything from the plant, but that worked out really good. And of course the tomatoes, it's not amazing. Last year's plant, all these tomatoes growing on these, the skimpy little trunk. It amazes me. 
Oh, I hear oh so many birds. Now I hear dogs barking. My ginger and stevia and turmeric table. This is amazing. I can't wait to dig up as I need it. And I have done doing that a little bit. I take a little bit if I need it because let's see if we can see inside. See, I don't know if we can get in here. See how beautiful? Look at that. That's that's ginger. So all I have to do is pull it out, cut off what I need, and put it back. And here is the ones from the grocery store. That's as big as they got. So the growth inhibitor did slow down the growth, but it should come back better next year. The ones that I grew here grew far better. They just took off and grew a whole lot better. And of course the turmeric is the big leaves. Look at this. It's amazing. Turmeric is smaller. They're like the size of your pinky and they're really small chunks and they grow such big leaves where ginger is really big and they grow little skinny leaves. Isn't that funny? That's the way it works. So this table's been doing good, and I don't know if I should designate another table or another area. Maybe a chair. That would be gorgeous to grow ginger in. I think that would be great. So we'll see and see what else is here. That's peppermint. And then again, another tomato plant coming up and just starting to throw some tomatoes. Okay, let's go into the main yard. Well, here we are, and here is that wild mess of tomatoes growing. These are volunteers. There's sorrow and more onions. I can't even get in here. I can get in here to harvest all the tomatoes I want and they are beautiful and they taste so good. But this isn't the way I would have planted it. But you know, what are you gonna do? If it comes up and it's happy, this is what plants do. Came up on its own, found its own spot in my container, which you can't even see right now. There is a container back there, look at that. And this is just a tomato that was in there that came up and it's massive. There's a bunch of tomato plants. I left them because I figured I'd leave the strongest ones survive. Look at that. It's a hybrid, one of them from a midnight snack. So it's kind of black, but not really black. So it's doing fantastic. And there has been zucchini. Oh yes, there's zucchini. There's zucchini there and there's zucchini there. I see one of them got sunburned. Probably just so much in the sun I should get it out. And then I've got oregano back there, more tomatoes growing. This is the dinosaur kale, and it's starting to make a comeback. See the leaves are changing? They're starting to get bigger. I'm still not sure how much of this I'll take out because it's so badly damaged. In hindsight, I should have staked it better. I could have directed the branches and made it look beautiful, almost topiary-like. But I didn't know. In the very beginning, I had no idea that a dinosaur kale could go for years and years and years and years and grow into a beautiful bush. Now, knowing that, I will direct it in the way I want it. And this will really make it take off. Look how beautiful now the dinosaur kale is doing. That's because it's done seeding and it's now putting all its energy into the leaves. So the birds are eating the leaves now. Look at that, lemon verbena. There's another one back here. That is the purple sprouting broccoli. And look how purple the leaves are. You see that? Just gorgeous. I hear that bird. I saw a bird I have never seen on the property. Gary said he has seen it. And I think it's called a, a California thrush. Oh yes, it's back. It's been eating the figs. I can't believe it, but you know what? It's, it's so big, it's like a scrub jay, and it just kind of scared me when I was sitting out here because of that beak it had. And isn't that amazing? I think it's an amazing bird. Okay, let's go on here. There's a tomato volunteer that came up, celery. The celery went to seed. If I chop the celery back, it will grow leaves again. See, it's trying to grow leaves here. If this bush on the top, let me pan you up. See up here, if that wasn't there, it would just take off. It would just take off and grow beautiful leaves. I'm leaving it for now because I did see the goldfinches eating the seeds yesterday. And generally, they don't eat the celery seeds that much. They really prefer dinosaur kale and dazzling blue kale. But you know, now that I know they're eating it, I'm gonna leave it. Mushroom plant, a little slow this year. Oh, I see something back there. It looks like a squash, we'll see. Oh, it might be beans. I've been throwing beans around now. But you know, if things are doing okay, been moving things a little bit, because they don't go back in that corner. We sit here, I don't go back in the corner. Let's turn you around. Okay, so what else is going? Basically, it's the same. I think I should do a quicker walkthrough and concentrate more on fun things to do. Look at that. 
That, that big massive thing there is the purple sprouting broccoli. It's turned into a tree. So there's another plant I had no idea would turn into a tree that I will be changing up. Because next time I would stake it, like even that one, that's a regular sprouting broccoli, the leaves are still small. That plant's about four years old now, and it's growing in that brick. Uh, if I would have known they grow that big, again, I would have staked it and directed it up. It, this is a learning process going along. I had no idea that they would grow these massive trunks and turn into trees. And I think it's really neat to leave them. Oh, there goes the thumbs down because people don't want to leave them. They want to take them out and grow new ones. You know, that's fine if you want to do it. Everybody does the garden the way they want. If you want baby plants, most certainly do baby plants and change them up. Absolutely. But I'd rather be able to come out here, enjoy the garden. And, you know, let's say this is all volunteer tomatoes growing through here. And there's some chocolate mint down there. This is where I feed the birds. This is where I play around with water features and try prototypes and stuff. And there's my water fountains. That, oh, the birds love it. Goldfinches come in. They come in by the dozen and sit there. There'd be dozens. and I've seen like 50 of them fly in here. And then they all keep coming in. They're all over in the trees right now. But they take baths and so many baths. But, you know, if, if you want to grow small ones, that would be fine. But look at this. This is a blue dazzling kale. They sit in this like a tree. And they so enjoy it. The hummingbirds sit in here. The, um, all the little birds, the goldfinches, house finches, they all sit in there. And, and sometimes I want to sit in the garden and watch them. So I think it's really nice. If they didn't have a tree in the garden, then they would be going in trees further away and I wouldn't be able to sit and enjoy them. So giving them the opportunity to have a nice place that they think is a tree, I get to enjoy them more. And so I really do like my dazzling kale. So that's really something I enjoy and I like it just because it got big. You know, it's turned into a tree. And I do use the leaves. We cook with the leaves, we use the leaves. I absolutely use the leaves on everything. This is plain collard. That got really big too. Hear them screaming? They want me to leave because they want to come get their water. It's early in the morning. The sun hasn't even come up yet. The pepinos are doing good. I don't know why Gary hasn't picked them. I really don't know that much about them. This thing is full. You can use them this way as a cucumber because they're hard. And as soon as they get soft, they become sweet like a melon. And Gary took some cuttings off of mine, which I really should do. And he rooted them. And he said they rooted immediately. He just took cuttings. Like here's a piece that's broke. I should finish taking that off because it's still attached, so it's still green. And I should just stick it in some soil and it'll grow. There's a cucumber coming up, onions. What else is in there? Oh, baby plants are coming up. Vegetable plants are coming up everywhere. The hummingbird almost hit me in the head. And then the hummingbirds, of course, come and use the water bath. And as you can see right in front of me, look at that. They don't care. They know I put this out. They know I'm here. They watch me fill it with water. They're very smart birds. They're, they are amazing. Uh, in here is, I still think it's a, either a sprouting broccoli. Oh, well, look at that. The broccoli heads are starting on that. Uh, sprouting broccoli or a cross between a hybrid and a broccoli. Because, again, they will they'll cross-pollinate and throw that. So it doesn't matter. Good eating. There's that curry plant, more tomato plants, tomato plants everywhere. And I know I miss a lot. I feel bad afterwards. I go through and it's like, oh, I didn't talk about this. And I didn't talk about that. It's so hard because there's so much. Look how much there is. I am trying to rush through. I don't want to make this too, too long. I want to go and do other things. I want to plant up chairs. Let's swing over here. Tomatoes coming up. Now that's a radish seed. It just threw some, there was a radish there and it's throwing seed, it through seeds and that's what's coming up there. But this is a walking onion. Look at this. This walking onion is walking. That's a baby walking onion inside. It's going to move its way all the way to the top and then it's going to burst through and it's going to make baby onions. Now see, I've got to get this planted right away because they don't store. See how it turned brown? And they're turning brown. One of them might be dried out. I've got to go through and collect more. I've been collecting them and setting up nurseries. But the lemon balm is doing good. Still in a pot. I've been using that to make tea. See the pot? There's the pot. And it's in the pot, but it's set root in this container. So everything's doing really good. But yes, I've got to collect my walking onions. Sweet potato down there. I did not plant it. Came up and I left it. 
Okay, let's swing around to the other side. Okay, we're back on the other side. Not far, just a matter of a couple of feet. The red vein Venusaurus is doing good. See, the water features haven't turned on yet. But the sun is coming out. It's going to hit me any second. More dazzling blue kale. And look how blue it is. It's kind of a blue purple is what it is. It's coming up in this triple decker pot that I had put in there. And there's onions growing around the black pot. And then that's in the center. So when you water it, I know that plant gets water. And it's doing really good. Again, another thing that I didn't stake right away and I should have. And it kind of curled around, but it's still up. And that's the main thing. That's a kind of a feel, the colored. The leaves are so small. Let me show you something really here. Look how small the leaves are. See, see, but this is all seed. So it's been, and it's pretty much done, but it's still taking care of its seed. I'm gonna show you some more colored as we go further down. And, um, and I'll remind you when we get there. Like I said, the water features are gonna go on any minute. This is gorgeous. Look at this down here. I've got a zucchini down there. I've got a, our bee is up already. A bee in my squash. There's, oh, there's another zucchini here, and this is where I'm composting. Isn't that cool? I am composting in there, and I can pick up that bucket and move it or dump it into another bin later when everything's done, the squash. So I can use that over and over. Let's see, really, over here. Walking onions. Here's a little area I set up to push those tiny little ones in that I'm not sure if they're alive and they're growing. And I definitely would never store them because they grow all winter. They just keep going and going. So when you store them, you lose about half the babies. But if you don't store them, you get about 100%. So there's another blue dazzling kale that's growing in with the tree color. Look at the tree color. Oh my gosh, this is a piece that fell over and it's growing so beautiful. I'm going to leave it. My eggplant. Interesting, it's taking off now. It's been slow all summer, but I'm getting eggplant here and on the other wall. Here's a new eggplant I put in. And again, the tree colored back there. That's in the pot, but I always know it's getting water. Oh, here comes the sun. It's going to get bright. And growing here, mixed in, you've got the dazzling blue kale. See, there's the dazzling blue kale. And they do get little insects sometime on them, and that's why I think the goldfinches like to sit in there and eat, which is good. They'll pull the insects off, and they'll leave the leaves alone, and then they'll get such beautiful leaves. And then this is the purple tree color. See, it's growing next to each other. And here, and this is... This is supposed to be a purple tree colored. It is. Isn't that interesting? The leaves are, are so big on that. And then this is a field of color that is now done seeding. Look at the size of the leaves compared to the other one. They're massive. They're bigger than my hand. And they're getting bigger and bigger because it's done seeding. And once it's done seeding, then all the energy goes into the leaves. And that's what I was trying to say. Don't worry if it's seeding and your leaves look real little. If you want to leave it, it will come back and it will grow beautiful once it's done seeding. And if you're in a hurry, cut the seeds off. Go through, trim the seed, all the seed heads off. You can see them there, the brown ones. Take them off, compost them, do what you want, collect the seeds, and the leaves will take off. And there's my moringa. And papaya. Gary's been harvesting. Oh, he took the last one off now. He's been harvesting the papaya. And my strawberries, I've been pulling strawberries. I see a little tiny red one down there. And this is the bed I made up just for walking onions to drop in there. And I see a tomatoes in there. But see, I throw them in here and I push them in here. And even the teeniest ones will grow. Just push them in there because I've got to get them in the soil. Let's see, here's one that's laying in the soil. That's the way it should go by nature. Oh, look, cool. Look at the roots. Okay, see, that one would make it right there. But if they don't touch and get partly buried like that then they won't grow and they'll just die and they'll die on the plant that's probably why it throws so many because there's so many babies because some of them just have to survive so if they didn't throw so many you wouldn't have that many going a john kohler he grows them and i watched one of his videos and he said which was interesting it looks like they can take over your yard and yet he's never had one in las vegas set on its own and that's because they really do need a lot of water when they first start to set root that that ground that soil has got to be really wet and it's got to be partially covered if it's not it won't grow the roots like that so they'll just dry up on the plant and that's it nothing else is new here 
like I said, the sun is coming up. It's going to be in my eyes any second. Those are mint. That's a chocolate mint. That's celery that went to seed. My other moringa, which I trimmed down and is doing beautiful. So we're using the leaves off a bit. And then I've got some more tomatoes starting. I think I should go in the other yard, but here comes the sun. So let's go do the other yard. Am I rushing? A little bit because I know it's so long and there hasn't been a big change and I'm not really thinking about a real winter garden yet and how much will be here. I don't know if I'll lose anything this winter. Every winter is different. So let's go in the other yard and keep going. Well, now we're outside where the papayas grow on this particular area of the garden. Everything is, I'm gonna say, the same. At least it looks that way to me unless I look back at the old videos. We are still loaded with papayas. Look at that. I, I still can't believe that. And we've got papayas on all these trees here. And we've got some that are really starting to take off now. I think they're doing really good. Look at the size of them now. Hopefully they'll do exactly what the other ones did. But this time, oh my gosh, there's already flowers on these. I did not see that the other day. Look at the flowers. They're just starting. Wow. To think that this was in my garden and I just want to get rid of it because it came up in the compost drag this one out and bury the pot and I know some of you who have not seen my garden tours are saying why are you keeping it in a pot you know what it works that one broke through and took off the reason is here in Southern California we can get so dry and so many people say they lost their gardens and they water it and they don't know where the water is going well if you don't have them in a pot the water can create its own underground river system so you may water the ground and think you're watering the plant, but the water can take off and go do something else. So this way it works. You know what? All I can say is it works for me. It works for Gary. And yes, we do put tons of stuff in the ground. I mean, the pomegranates in the ground. It actually happened with these three papayas where we never planned on even growing them. This was not planned. We didn't get the papayas to grow. It just, that's what they did. And we dragged them out here. And well, actually I think some of them came up in the compost. So I compost in place, cold compost, and they started to grow and we let the strongest survive. And that's what happened. So it wasn't something like, oh, we're gonna line up papayas here and grow papayas. No, we lined up the pots and left them. This one came up in here and I left this one. That one I don't believe has a bottom on it, this particular pot. I think I cut the bottom off on that one. So the pot is there just to direct the water to the plant. The pot eventually will probably break apart. Anyways, that's what's going on here. Again, nothing new. Gary picked all the papayas off at this one and now it's starting new flowers. As you could see, hopefully we'll have a nice mild winter and spring and they'll continue to fruit all year. That's a celery that came up in here. See, I compost in place in here and it feeds the papayas. Papayas are such heavy feeders. They really need a lot of food. So if you throw leaves and things from the garden in there or rot out, it will drain out of this container like I do container gardening. I didn't plant the celery, it just came up. And it will leach into the ground and that's what's feeding these papayas. That's what's feeding all of them. They all have their own containers, see? Every papaya here, except for the two little ones, have their own containers. All right, let's see. So nothing else here. Rosemary's doing good. The pomegranates are got pomegranates on them, and I'm going to swing you around. Now let's go walk over to the wall. So here's the bathtub. I never did stake it. I got the stakes all up. Never staked it. Never needed to. Nothing bothered it. And yes, we are getting a lot of zucchini. Okay, that one's no good. You know why some of them are turning yellow? Because I'm loaded with zucchini in here, and that's just too big. I've got to get all the big zucchini off. I just have so much zucchini this year. I haven't pulled them all off. There's a new plant. I planted some seeds in there. They're starting to come up. I haven't done anything here. The reason is I've got so much of my own garden and then Gary's got his garden and now I've got the front yard and now I've got my chairs I'm starting to set up. I've got more food than I really need and the wall gets warm. So being that we're in summer and we've been really hot anyways generally, I decided to kind of let this go wild and let it do its thing. That's celery that's got seed on it, old tomato plant, you know. I'm going to just leave it right now and this is um, 
Swiss chard, but it's got kind of the red vein to it. The leaves are really small right now, as you can see, because it's just so full of seeds. It's putting, see how small they are? But normally they're big, and I'm just letting it, you know, set its seeds. The birds can eat some. I don't see the birds eat too much Swiss chard. Maybe it's not their favorite seed, I don't know, but I'm gonna collect the seeds and kind of throw them around. So I'm kind of letting this thing do its own thing. And I'm thinking, we'll see, of making a winter garden here. Because the sun is changing and this wall facing south is gonna get a lot of sun all fall and winter, which means it's gonna stay warm. So I've got a good chance, see what I did to all these tubs here? I have a really good chance of growing all these new plants into fruit for the you know for the year I may be able to get plenty of zucchini these may be hybrids because all the seeds growing in here and we'll step over here all of them I planted came out of my own zucchini out of my own yard and I have found a lot of times that they don't grow true but they're just as good they taste really good and there's no issue unless they're bred with a pumpkin then they can get a little bit more of a pumpkiny taste but I don't have any pumpkin here so we should be okay and I don't know if my neighbors are growing pumpkins I doubt it so this should be really really good so hopefully with the wall staying warm and as the Sun is coming and facing this way I'm hoping to get fruit for the rest of the year until spring so we'll see how it goes You'll see with me. I've got, uh, what, six containers set up here and I plan on getting some more things in here. But I'm going to turn this more into a winter garden. I'm gonna trim up and clean up the eggplant a little bit. That's more Swiss chard. And then that is just uh, sow thistle that went to seed. I leave that for the birds. And as you can see, there's more along here. And that I do know, the goldfinches love that. That's a big staple in their diet. So we leave whatever's not in our way and they eat the seeds off of that. We have them on here all the time. And they love the seed. The seed is in here, as you can see here. See, they have, let me see if I can show you. See, the seed is on the end of the fuzzy thing. And of course, that's how the seeds fly around because they come apart and then they just blow. But that's where the seed is. It's a little brown seed on there. And the goldfinches just hang all over it. I've seen a lot of things eat it. I've even seen squirrels eat it. So we leave that and that's all down there. And as soon as it turns really, really brown and there's no seeds left on it, then we do pull it and we compost it. Or I should say sometimes we pull it, sometimes we just cut it and leave the roots. But I think that's gonna be a really cool winter garden. That I haven't done. Usually by the end of summer, I'm done with this and I just water it. So I think I'm gonna try it differently this year. And then we're here at the truck bed haven't done too much with it all i do right now is water it i am going to be able to collect seed from here yes my swiss chard will be hybridized with each other because i've got the red and the red vein and the green growing in here but that's okay it's food it doesn't matter and then that's garlic chives in the back that are flowering and what else i've got walking onions in here somewhere i know they're in here and then more sal thistle which we actually use when I make a green drink, but again, I leave that for the goldfinches because like the hummingbirds, you all know that I was in shock when I found out we don't have hundreds. We have over a thousand hummingbirds living here now. Well, I believe we've got the same thing with the goldfinches. We used to be so excited to see a couple and now we're, we can literally see 50, sometimes 100 of them at one time, the trees will be full of them. So we have a lot of goldfinches. And the reason is they had their babies here and there's plenty of food, there's water, there's shelter with all the trees that we leave around here. They have a lot of shelter. And so they've made themselves a home here and they just, the babies keep having babies and that's what's going on nature so anyways that's what I'm leaving in here some of the food right now for the goldfinches and I have been harvesting the green Swiss chard for ourselves but I will have to admit the nicest Swiss chard right now that I'm growing on the property and I've been using every day it's coming out of the chair in the front yard the you may have seen it today and the leaves don't look like it's much but that's because I'm picking it every day and it just keeps growing I am going to get a whole bunch of chairs set up. I love my chairs. And I really think people who don't have a place to garden should try a chair. Because if you've got dogs or cats or things running around, nothing bothers them. 
and it's so easy and you'll have to bend down. So that's it, the tree is gone. You saw that in the last garden tour. We did take the avocado tree out. I don't even know why that is covered. I pulled one cage away and the rabbits have been eating it and that's fine. Let's see what's over here. And this is the avocado that came up out of the wood chips that were once delivered. We had some wood chips that we knew came from, I think, Haas avocados. And that one came up. So Gary threw a cage over it. And we're going to see what happens because he said it planted itself in the perfect spot. In fact, as time goes on, I'm thinking of planting fruit trees all along here. Because I'm not gardening here. And even if somebody wanted the park, we have a lot of the, my grandkids' uh, birthday parties here. There's still plenty of place to park. So if we grew trees all along here, like we did the papayas, we should be able to do something really nice here. So that's basically it. And Gary's bees, you can't really see right now, but they are down there. They're doing good. and They don't even fit in the box anymore. So I don't know if they're going to go to that barbecue he's got set up down there. And they might. But if they do, that's fine. If they don't, he's got plenty of bees. So I think he's starting to work on a box. He'll see. But he's really happy with the bees that he collected off the palm tree. You've seen the video, I'm sure. It's crazy. He climbed it, but he's happy with his bees. And you know what? Knock on wood, they've never stung us. We've never been stung by those bees. And he goes and checks his bees out. So with that, I think that's it. I didn't want to make this uh, hopefully not too long because there's not a lot of change right now. Even though we are at the end of summer, we have a few more weeks officially left of summer. But as they call Labor Day here, the end of summer, uh, that nothing's changed so I'm starting to do things now like I said as you can see there's the squash going in so I am going to see if I can have a winter garden here and again it will just depend on the weather we had a very beautiful mild winter last year it was spring that ended up being literally freezing cold so with that I think I've covered everything for today I hear the wren in the tree that's where the wren had its babies this year I hear the buzz buzz. That is a wren. And I'm going to cut this short. I'm hoping. It's probably going to end up going and looking at it and finding out it's an hour long. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for joining me. And we'll do this again in two weeks. And hopefully things are going to start to change. Have a great day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye, everybody.